CataractCoach.com. Cataract surgery in an eye with prior radial keratotomy. Can we use a toric IOL? And you see I'm marking the steep axis here because we're preparing to use a toric IOL in this case. Now this is a patient who had eight cut radial keratotomy and you see those eight radial cuts like spokes of a bicycle wheel. And the RK was done on this patient in about 1990. We're seeing a lot more of these patients here in the US because these patients had RK done in their 20s and 30s, and that was in the 1980s and 1990s. And now in year 2020, these patients are 60s and their 70s, coming on 80 years old, and it's time for them to have cataract surgery. So you saw we made the main incision between the RK incisions. Don't intersect the RK incisions with your new incisions. Don't touch the old RK incisions. We are showing this video at two times the normal speed, just so we can get through the whole case here. There's a nice capsule rex, as you see, it's well centered on the Purkinje images. Do some nice hydro dissection. Definitely want to be gentle on these RKIs. The RK incisions were at least 90% depth, and those incisions, if you're not careful, can open up during the surgery, and you got to be careful about that. So putting the phaco probe in the eye, here comes the chopper. Notice again, both incisions are away from the RK cuts. Quick chop into the two halves, and then we can bring up each half of the hemonucleus. Again, chop it even more into qu uh, quadrants or quarters. Bring those up and emulsify them. And again, we're watching this video at twice normal speed just to get through the whole case. I want to have the benefit of the whole case given to you so that you can see the details. So the nucleus removal isn't too difficult compared to normal case. Of course, remember, these lens calculations, these eyes are very different and certainly far less accurate than an, or, an average eye that didn't have RK. So now adjusting the microscope lighting there, we'll put the IA probe in the eye and take out our cortex. And this goes pretty smoothly using a spatula there just to push the pieces down the port. My technician's loading up my lens. It's going to be a single piece acrylic lens and it's going to be a toric lens. How do you choose toric power? Well, look at the central three or four millimeters on topography. And if the patient has a regular and consistent degree and symmetric degree of astigmatism on topography in that central four millimeters, you can pretty much be uh, rest assured that you're going to be fine putting a toric lens. There's a lens 27. Why such a high power? Well, believe it or not, that's to aim for emetropia. Now we're using a wound assist technique, so that's why the eye is being pushed into the nasal canthus and get that uh, lens in the capsule bag, we'll dot it around. This patient was actually preoperatively very hyperopic. So before RK, myopic, minus six or seven. After RK, pretty close to Plano for about 20 years. And then so the slow progression towards further corneal flattening and then progression to hyperopia. So at the time of the patient's surgery, the patient was a plus four hyperope for distance vision. And so we're trying to correct the entire thing and return the patient to about plano once again. Do not put a multifocal lens in these eyes. These patients already have a multifocal cornea because of the RK regularities. Stick with a monofocal lens and maybe a toric. Check out cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. So much great material, way more than you'll find on my YouTube channel. I bet you'll be impressed. Check it out and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send a great case to you every day and then you can do beautiful surgery just like this.